Hi everyone, Chica here. Welcome to the Narc Dojo podcast, where each episode is a treasure trove of insights, tools, and stories to help you break free from the shackles of narcissistic abuse and step into a life of strength and joy. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down to you the deep spiritual underpinnings of narcissism. Narcissists always have an agenda. And their agenda essentially is to get to you for whatever they can get from you. So you are dealing with someone that is coming into your life for your resources. So this could be your time, attention, could be your money, could be your house, could be your car, could be your social network. So you may not see these as resources, but the pathological narcissist absolutely does. And this is because narcissists operate in a parasitic nature. And oftentimes on the channel, you hear me state that every day a mosquito wakes up and that mosquito knows it needs to find a host. This is because this is how mosquitoes feed. Similarly, every day a pathological narcissist wakes up and they need to find narcissistic supply. And narcissistic supply essentially is the attention, admiration, validation, and the reflection that they get from other people. So they are people addicts. They need people to survive. Just like a parasite needs a host. So understand that if a narcissist is coming into your life, it is to take something from you. All right, mosquitoes do not come to love, they come to take, just like a pathological narcissist. And oftentimes on the channel, you'll see me use the Hawkins scale or the map of consciousness by Dr. David R. Hawkins. And you can find this in Power Versus Force and his other books. And this gives you a good idea of where someone is at a consciousness level because we are consciousness at our core. We are spirit or consciousness Governing a human body with access to tools, namely our mind power, our willpower, and our emotions. So if at our core we are spirit, then you should be discerning spirit. Because on the physical, someone may look attractive, for example. But behind the veil, they could be a very malevolent person. A very evil person. A very antisocial person. And antisocial people here means that they are against the building of communities. They are against the building of societies. They are against, they are the opposition. So we're talking about villains. We are talking about antagonists. So if you were dealing with a pathological narcissist, then you were dealing with an antagonist. They come to go against you. You cannot build with a pathological narcissist. They embody destructive energy. They are based in shame at a consciousness level. And at best, they cannot move past their pride. So know that the higher you go on the Hawkins scale, the better you feel. Because as spiritual beings, we are here to spiritually awaken. We are here to reach our highest potential. So we are here to expand. So we expand the higher we go. And this highest state of expansion is what you may refer to as enlightenment or self-actualization or activating your third eye or crown chakra. So we are here to expand. However, pathological narcissists are stuck in a contracted state. Every day they wake up, they're in shame. So every day they wake up, they're in the first dimension. And at best, they get to the third dimension. They get to pride and pride comes before the fall and they fall right back down to shame. So think of this as someone operating on about 5% battery life, just like a cell phone. And you know that when your cell phone is that low on battery, the phone doesn't operate very well. You know, the apps don't open very well. Some of the apps may crash or you may be trying to watch a video, but the video is loading very slow. And this is because the phone needs more power. The battery is too low. 
And you'll see where when someone's battery is low, at an energetic vibration, again, at a spiritual level, at their core, well, things won't operate very well. You know, they won't be able to operate their tools very well. They won't be able to properly operate their faculties, you see. And the faculties that we have are the mind power, the willpower, and the emotion. This is our soul. This is our psyche. This is our personality. Because we are spirit, our consciousness, life, life, force, source, source, energy, governing a human body, governing a physical body with the access to tools. We are predominantly not physical. You can touch the body, but you cannot touch the soul or the spirit. You cannot touch the mind. And the mind is not the brain. The brain is a physical organ that is a part of the body. You cannot touch the mind. You cannot touch the subconscious mind. You cannot touch the conscious mind. But you know that someone can lose their mind because they are not their mind. They have a mind. A mind is a tool. It is a faculty that we have. We can use the mind to generate ideas. Maybe we're working on a project. So we use the mind to brainstorm. We use the mind to think. And memorize and recollect. Cannot touch the mind. But again, you know that you have a mind. You also know that you have emotions, but you are not the emotions, right? Emotions are energy in motion. So you feel emotions. You feel anger and rage. You feel sadness. You feel joy. You feel peace. And you are also not the will, but you know that you have a will. And think of your willpower like your discipline muscle. It is like a reserve that you have. To push you through. So your willpower, like a muscle, can get tired. So you have to rest to regenerate the will. And this is why we say someone can lose their will to live, for example. So with a developed will, you will be very disciplined. And with an underdeveloped will, then somebody is compulsive or impulsive in their behavior. And again, we're not our body. We have a body. So if you go to a funeral, well, the body is going to be in the casket. But we are not able to communicate with the life force, the spirit that was governing that body. Because now that spirit has moved on to another dimension. And it is the law of conservation which states that Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just transforms. So now that person is a disembodied spirit when before they were an embodied spirit. So now they are a spirit without a body. When they were physically walking around, then they were a spirit with a body. And that essentially is the life cycle. At our core, we are spirit having a human experience. So when it comes to pathological narcissists, their spirits, again, their tanks are running on E, they're running on 5% because pathological narcissists abandoned their true selves in childhood for a false self. They abandoned spirit for ego. They abandoned consciousness for on consciousness because the ego is a mind made construct the ego is a mind made construct the ego is a thought the ego is a belief system the ego is a mind made construct we are spirit and if pathological narcissists abandon spirit then they abandon their true self they abandon their generator they abandon source That energy that regenerates. Again, we are spirit at our core. However, pathological narcissists believe that they are their ego. And this is a mask that they wear to deceive. This is why they pretend to be other people. Because they did not develop their spirit. Because if you look behind the physical veil. And let's say somebody is 40 years old. 
you'll see where pathological narcissists stop developing internally. So we're talking about spirit, mind, emotions, and will, somewhere between the ages of about 5 and 12 years old. So again, you could be dealing with a narcissist that is in her 20s, 30s, or 40s in this example, 50s, maybe elderly narcissists in their 60s or 70s. You'll see where they have psycho-spiritual arrested development. So this at its core come from the spirit level because the battery was running on 5%. And because their battery was running on 5%, then they did not develop their faculties. They couldn't use the apps properly. So you see where you're dealing with someone that is losing their mind. You're also dealing with someone that is losing control of their emotions because they're based in shame and they cannot move past their pride. So the shame that we're talking about is pathological shame. And oftentimes you'll hear me describe this as self-esteem so low that they would probably have to look up to see it, meaning that it is little to non-existent, which is why they're predominantly their ego. So understand that they are like 95% ego and 5% spirit. And they should be 95% spirit and 5% ego. Pathological narcissists are egomaniacs in the truest sense of the word. They are wired backwards. You should not be ego first or ego dominant. That's very imbalanced. And this is what you're seeing on the outside. This is why you cannot reason with them. You're talking to their ego because you do not have access to their spirit. They did not develop a spirit. They developed a false self. They developed an ego. Pathological narcissists are wired backwards. And this is why you cannot grow with them. They are wired backwards. And because of this, they are regressing. So understand that this gets worse over time. For example, let's say you are in a narcissistic abusive entanglement. You know, maybe the entanglement was one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever that time period is. You see where that relationship went down over time. So what you're seeing in that relationship deteriorating because you cannot grow with them. They fail like a bad stock. They go down over time is regression. You cannot build with a pathological narcissist. They themselves are regressing. You cannot build with someone that is regressing. You have to build with someone that is progressing. You have to build with somebody that is growing, evolving when they are devolving and they are devolving because they abandoned their spirits in childhood. They believed that it was the best thing to wear a mask. However, conscious or unconscious, they believe that the best way to go through life is to wear a mask. And here's the thing. This worked. But then after a while it didn't. Because after you see the mask slip and that they are not who they say they are, well, people are going to leave. So you see that they're stuck in this repeated cycle. The narcissistic abuse cycle of idealization where they mirror back to you your reflection so if you like R&B music the narcissist likes R&B music if you like soccer the narcissist likes soccer if somebody else likes basketball the narcissist likes basketball they're just mirroring other people and they're mirroring other people because they don't have a true self the true self is on 5%. And most often, you're not interacting with the true self. You're interacting with the false self, the mask. You're interacting with the mask that they wear. And the mask is a mirror of your personality. That's the deception. Pathological narcissists themselves do not have a true personality. They have an evil spirit, but they don't really have a true personality. Again, whoever you thought you knew does not exist. On day zero, you are interacting with a mask. And that is a very bitter pill to swallow. Whoever you met on day zero mirrored back to you an idealized image of you. 
they mirror you. They are a chameleon. Because what happens is when you get to the devalue and the discard and the verbal abuse and the psychological manipulation and so on comes in, you'll see that you're dealing with a completely different person. So who you met on day zero does not exist. That is the love bomb. And there is a bomb attached to the end of that word because pathological narcissists do not have love to give. They have deception to give, chaos to give, manipulation to give, lies to give, connivory to give, neglect to give, abuse to give. But pathological narcissists do not have love to give. I don't care if you're dealing with a narcissistic parent, a sociopathic parent, a narcissistic sociopath, a sociopathic narcissist. It's not love. It is manipulation. It's conditional love, which is manipulation. Pathological narcissists are rooted in their shame and they cannot move past their pride. Love is way up there in the 500s. So what you were dealing with was someone that was mirroring you. So you thought you were dealing with someone that was like you, but they are the opposite of you. Because Chucky pretends to be a good guy, but Chucky is... A doll that is operated by the spirit of a serial killer, an evil spirit, a dark spirit, an antisocial spirit. Chucky comes to deceive, hence wearing a good guy mask. And the good guy mask for the narcissist is the idealized image of you. If you like R&B music, the narcissist likes R&B music. If somebody else likes country music, all of a sudden the narcissist likes country music. They will mirror that person. They will become a country music expert. And it is in them mirroring you and getting you to fall for the reflection of you is when they can come in later and devalue you. Because when you get to the deep value stage and things are going wrong in the relationship, then you're trying to get back to the love bomb stage. But the love bomb stage was a manipulation. So you stay on the hamster wheel to hell. Going back, trying to fix something that was never a mutually beneficial relationship in the first place. It was an abuse cycle. You accepted a deal with the devil. It was manipulation on day zero because narcissists have an agenda and it is to take whatever resources they see that you have. They want your money. They are oftentimes very money hungry individuals. They want your energy. They want your attention. They want your time. They want your reflection. And they want your reflection because they don't exist. They need you to mirror back something to them. They lost their spirit. That's the disorder. At its core, that's the disorder. And then you see the manifestation of that in the mind, the emotions, and the will. Because if they're operating a dark spirit, well, again, the battery is too low. So they're got, you know, you're dealing with someone that is losing their minds. Not enough power. Not enough energy. The apps ain't working. So the entire personality is disordered. The entire psyche is disordered. The entire soul is dark. They are lost souls. So they are losing their minds. And they're losing their minds because they believe that they are their ego. We are not our egos. We have a ego. We are not the mind. We have a mind. And pathological narcissists believe that they are their minds. So they are losing their minds. We are not the mind. The mind is a tool. We are spirit. But the narcissists abandon their spirit. Or an ego, a false self. So the false self cannot self-reflect. And someone that cannot self-reflect cannot grow. So they regress. You need a true self to self-reflect. Pathological narcissists don't have a true self. They abandon the true self or the false self. For an ego, a mind made 
construct, a figment of their imagination. The figment of a child's imagination now existing inside of an adult's body. So understand that what you're dealing with today is someone that mirrors whoever they go around. Narcissists are personality thieves because, well, they don't really have a personality of their own. So they're stuck in a state of mirroring. And essentially what the mind does is it generates another mask and another mask and another mask and another mask and another mask. And with this, the narcissist drifts deeper and deeper and deeper into the sunken place, losing themselves. Because their lights are getting dimmer with age, it is regressing. It is regression. They are devolving because they don't want to let go of the ego. Because you will see where when you question them, they have a narcissistic injury. And a narcissistic injury is when a pathological narcissist perceives a threat, whether real or imagined, that goes against the false self, that goes against the ego. So Jim Carrey does not want to take off that green mask. You know, the mask is now glued to their face. And because they won't take off the mask, well, they can't really know themselves because they're not developing their true self. They're developing their false selves, the masks that they wear. So you cannot truly know a narcissist. This is why the relationship wasn't really going anywhere. You weren't interacting with the person. The person isn't there. Very rarely do you get a glimpse of that 5% battery life. What you were interacting with was the ego that was masking the dark spirit. So because of this severe dissociation, because the captain abandoned ship and the driver was in the back seat, so understand that at a spirit level, this type of dissociation leaves a vacuum. And things in nature do not stay empty per se. It just gets filled with whatever energy source can operate at that vibration. The law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only converted from one form of energy to another. So because we are spirit and we are light, when narcissists abandoned their light, they accepted darkness. If we are consciousness and narcissists abandoned their consciousness, well, they accepted unconsciousness. So the inverse happens. And if we are life and pathological narcissists abandon their life, well, they accepted death, a spiritual death. And you see that body is walking around here on this planet, but they are not really here. They are somewhere else, you see. They are in another dimension. So physically, you could be standing right beside this individual, but they are in a completely different dimension. They are in the upside down. And this is why everything for them is upside down. They are wired backwards. They are ego first and spirit last. They lost themselves, you see. They believe that they are the ego. They believe that they are the mind-made construct that they created. They believe that they are the thought in their mind, opposed to the observer of the mind, the consciousness observing the mind. They believe that they are the ego, and the ego is a mind-made construct. So they believe that they are the figment of their own imagination. This is no different from me coming on here telling you that I'm Wonder Woman or Spider-Man, or Thor, or some other superhero. It's made up. Pathological narcissists abandoned themselves at the core of this shame-based 
disorder is that they abandon their true self for a false self. So the law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only converted from one form of energy to another. So they abandon light for darkness, consciousness for unconsciousness, life for death, and life for evil. Evil is the opposite of living. It is live inverted. This is why pathological narcissists are antisocial in their behavior, especially the narcissists that border on antisocial personality disorder, that which you may commonly call sociopathy and psychopathy. Because narcissism is actually a part of the dark triad. It is where narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy overlap. So we're talking about a severe type of empathy impairment, very cold, very callous individuals, and oftentimes very lawless individuals. These are the malignant narcissists. It is where narcissism, NPD, and ASPD overlap. Narcissism is also a part of the dark tetrad, right? Where that's narcissism, Machiavellianism, psychopathy, and sadism. So pathological narcissists are often sadistic individuals because you are dealing with someone that has accepted an evil spirit. They abandon the life for evil. Evil is life spelled backwards. It is antisocial in nature. They abandon light, which means that they accepted darkness. They believe that they are the ego. The captain stepped out. The captain abandoned the ship. The driver is in the back seat. And the law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only converted from one form of energy to another. This means that a system always has the same amount of energy unless it is added from the outside. You see, when pathological narcissists abandon their light, then this allowed dark energy to walk in. And this dark energy is the very palpable dark force that you feel travel with the pathological narcissist. There are different names for dark energy depending on the culture that you come from. So we could call this unconsciousness. We could call this dark. We could call this evil. Because dark is the opposite of light and evil is the opposite of life. It is against life. It is anti. It is villain energy. It is antagonistic energy. It is the opposition Understand that if you are dealing with a pathological narcissist, you are dealing with the opposition. They abandon their light. And if you abandon your light, will you accept darkness? Because we live in a dualistic universe. You know, yin, yang, light, dark, etc. The reason why you know that that is the front of an object is because it has the back of the object. It's opposing. You don't have a top without a bottom. That's how you know. It's relative. So again, pathological narcissists abandoned their lights, so they accepted darkness. That is what you're dealing with today. Someone that has accepted an evil spirit. So if someone has accepted an evil spirit, then they are dark at their core. They're running on 5%, 4%, 3%, 1%. So people probably are running on 0%. Very dark. And you'll feel this palpable dark force travel with them. Because now what you're dealing with today are walk-ins. Pathological narcissists are walk-ins. That self-abandonment left a portal for darker energy to come in, to walk in and operate them. Because the driver was in the back seat. The driver is an ego in the mind somewhere. So 
this palpable dark force can walk in. So we're talking about malevolent energy, malevolent entities, demons. And the deeper down you go into the cluster B, the more evil people get. Because your spirits are very dim, very dim the deeper you get. Because the deeper you get into the cluster B, if we're talking about empathy impairment, people that have no love to give, then you're going into psychopathy. And one level up from them is the sociopath. And one level up from them is the narcissist. And what you call psychopathy and sociopathy is what the DSM classifies as antisocial personality disorder. They are against the living. This is because the law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only converted from one form to another. Pathological narcissists abandoned light, accepted darkness. This means that a system always has the same amount of energy unless it is added from the outside. And pathological narcissists, people are walk-ins. And if you were entangled with a pathological narcissist, especially those in intimate relationships or some of you that have seen this in the narcissistic parent, you will see where they will shift personalities. Where it is very obvious that a different spirit is operating them. A malevolent spirit. Not the abandoned child self that abandoned themselves somewhere between 5 and 12 years old. You're dealing with a spirit that was added from the outside. A walk in. Some of you have seen the narcissist's eyes go full black. That's the spirit. That's the malevolent spirit. That's the dark spirit that stepped in. Because they are a walking void. What they have is a portal to the underworld. Because every day they wake up there in shame. A self-loathing state. A very dangerous state to be in. And every day pathological narcissists wake up there in the 1D. They're in hell every single day. At best they get to pride. Dysfunctional pride. And this is where their grandiosity and their false sense of superiority comes from. Pride comes before the fall, they fall right back down to shame because they won't let go of their ego. So, they're stuck in their ego, which leaves the spirit dimension empty. So, it's a portal. So, they stepped out, something else stepped in. The palpable dark force that was added in from the outside. So, some of you have seen the narcissist's eyes go full black. No sclera, full back. That's the entity. That's the spirit. Others of you have seen the glowing golden eyes of the narcissist. That's the spirit, people. That's the spirit that walked in. The predatory spirit, the malevolent spirit, the dark, evil spirit. And that is the spirit that you were dealing with on day zero. On day zero, the mask was there to hide the evil spirit. Chucky pretends to be a good guy, but Chucky is a doll that is operated by the spirit of a serial killer. An evil spirit, a dark spirit, an antisocial spirit. Chucky has no love to give. He has never had love to give. Chucky pretends to be a good guy. Just a mask to hide the evil spirit that you were dealing with on day zero. This is why Chucky mimics you so that you accept the invitation. Let me in. And if you accepted the deal, well, you accepted a deal with the devil. 
Some of you have seen dark shadows around your home. That's the spirit. When disembodied. Other times it just operates through the narcissist. So whether you've seen the black eyes, the glowing eyes, the reptilian eyes, the shadow figures, other entities, that's the spirit. That's the spirit that you were dealing with on day zero. So it is important that you understand that pathological narcissists are people that have accepted an evil spirit. At their core, they are evil. An evil spirit uses the mind for evil. An evil spirit uses their emotions for evil, so they're going to emotionally manipulate you, emotionally abuse you. An evil spirit uses their will for evil. They're going to try to break your will. And an evil spirit, people, if you get entangled with an evil spirit, then that is spiritual warfare. You were being attacked at your core and you didn't know it. We didn't know it because we accepted the mask, the facade that hides the evil spirit, which is why it is of the utmost importance that you learn to discern spirit. Body is the vessel. What kind of spirit is operating the vessel? Is it a dark spirit? Or is it a light worker? Are they a star seed? Or are they a black hole? Because pathological narcissists are black holes. They are voids. It's demonic energy. Parasitic energy. All it does is consume. Consume light. Because it's a black hole. A collapsed star. People, I really do hope that you are getting this message. You are interacting with a void. You cannot love a pathological narcissist and a pathological narcissist cannot love you back. They don't exist. You cannot love a demon and a demon cannot love you back. Demons will have love to give. Demons hate humanity. They are antisocial in nature. They hate humans. And this is why it wouldn't matter how much love you try to pour into them because all of your love and kindness and compassion is going to evaporate at the third dimension. Nobody's there to truly receive it. You cannot love a demon and a demon cannot love you back. And the abandoned child self is way in the back somewhere lost, drifting off into the sunken place. Very rarely do you see them. If you do, it's going to be for a couple of seconds at most. What you were interacting with on day zero was the evil spirit. Pathological narcissists are 95% dark energy. Darkness. The darkness they accepted when they abandoned their light. When they abandon spirit, we're here to spiritually awaken. So they will forever be asleep, not truly living, and also unable to die. Caught in the sunken place, trapped between worlds. Drifting. Not truly alive, not truly dead. Drifting. Deeper and deeper and deeper into unconsciousness into the oblivion and the oblivion is where you are headed when you are in that entanglement where up is down and left is right and nothing can ever be right because you're going in the wrong direction you are descending Past the third dimension, past the second dimension, into the first dimension. And there's no bottom to the first dimension. 
There is no bottom to hell. There is no bottom to the sunken place. And that is where pathological narcissists have been headed long before you came into the picture. Misery loves company. Pathological narcissists are tormented souls. And a tormented soul will torment your soul. And you'll eventually feel like you're losing your mind. As if you're going through a type of psychosis. Your emotions will eventually be all over the place. Because you are interacting with the insane. That is based in shame and unable to move past their pride. And over and over and over again, you'll feel like you're losing control of your emotions. And eventually, you may also feel like you're losing the will to live. Because you are interacting with a tormented soul. And they are tormented souls because they abandon their light, they abandon their source. So now they have to hunt for narcissistic supply. They have to plug into other sources, to other spirits, to other generators, to other sources because they lost their source in childhood. The tale of Narcissus from Greek mythology was a warning of the dangers with self-obsession, with the obsession in the reflection in the pond, the image that one puts on. It was a tale of warning of the dangers of being obsessed with one's ego. Because ego became the death of narcissus. And similarly, ego is the death of the narcissist. And that's really it for today's message, kind people. If you appreciate the content, please give us a like and subscribe for more important content. If you have any questions or feedback, go ahead and leave that in the comment section. She has the name. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.